in this video you are going to create variables that contain not just one value but multiple values and these are called lists in CMake. We use the set command like we have used before so you say set you specify the variable name and you specify a list of things you want to be stored in that variable. For students one here we want the names Steve, Morion and Dave stored in now you can notice that we are separating these things with a space. Again, this is going to be a list containing three names in memory and uh, we will be able to manipulate them later on. We can also define another list called students2. We will separate our data with semicolons. This is a supported separator in CMake. This is going to contain four names. But if you go to student three here, because we are using a quoted argument, this is not going to be three names. This is going to be one name delimited by these quotes that you see here. This is something you should keep in mind. If we print these, we will see this name cramped together, except for Mary, Lily, and Dom's here, because this entire thing in quotes is one thing, if I can say it like that. Now, up until now, we relied on the message command to see what is stored in our variables, but we couldn't really know how many things are in there. I have been telling you, we really have three things in here, but you have to trust me. The message command is going to cramp all these things together. Now we have a tool, the list command, which we use to carry out a number of operations on our list variables. For example, we can ask it how many elements we have in our list. We can use it to append other elements to the list. You can see the exhaustive list of things you can do with the list command in the CMEC documentation. But here I am just going to give you the basics. Down here we are using the list command to get the length of our students one list. So we want to get how many elements we have inside and we specify the length value here as the first parameter. And the last parameter here is the variable that is going to store the length. Okay, so that's data is going to be stored in this variable here. And you can see as evaluating that value in our quoted argument to the message command here. This is something you can do. You can also use the list command to append data to a list. In this case, we want to append to students too. So Kirk is going to be the last element in the list and we can print the new length here. So we are using the message command, printing the value in our students two length variable here. And we can do the same things really on the students three and student two, as you see down here. Another thing I want you to see is the option command, which is really a friendly wrapper around the set command. We can use it to define a bool variable that is going to be storing on, off, true, false information. In this case, the variable name is optimize, and we can specify an option here that is going to be visible in GUI tools that we can use to configure our CMake projects. Again, you will see about these GUI tools later on in the series. And after this, you have the option to specify an initial value. Okay, so you can specify on or off after this description here, but if you want, you can leave it off and it is going to be off by default. So here we are going to be printing the value in this variable here, and we can use this to make decisions. We haven't really seen how to make decisions in CMake yet, but this is just something to spice up your appetite. You can say if optimize, if the value inside is true, we will execute to this. If it is false, we will fall out of this if statement here. It really works like in other programming languages. Now that you have seen this, we can head over to our editor and actually play with us. So here we are in our editor, Visual Studio Code. The current script is number three, as you see down here. Okay, list option dot CMake. And we want to set a few variables as list. So let's comment out the option thing before because we don't want it to disturb us. Again, you can use the list command to append things to really do all kinds of crazy things. I invite you to go in uh, the CMake documentation to look this up to see an exhaustive list of things you can do with it. But in this case, we will use it to manipulate the data we have in our lists that we set up using the set command as we do here. So we have a set students one, which is going to contain three strings. Steve, Morion, and Dave. 
We have Students 2, which is going to contain Curly, Bo, Victor, and John. And we have Students 3, which is going to contain Mary, Lily, and Doms as one quoted argument here. So this is going to be one string. I really want this to be super clear. We can print the data we have in these. So let's comment out. Uh, let's comment out what we have below here because we haven't really tried to use this. And let's try to run what we have in our CMake script, CMake P, because this is a script, and we will say three and tab to autocomplete. If we do that, it is going to print Steve, Morion, and Dave, Curly, Bo, Victor, and John. And you see that we can see the spaces in Mary, Lily, and Doms because this is one thing, okay? When you use quoted arguments, Spaces don't act as delimiters. It is going to be one thing. Make sure you understand this. But for students one and two, everything is going to be cramped together because they are separated. Okay, so a space here is going to be a separator. The semicolon here is going to be a separator. Now we can use the list command to actually know how many things we have in our students one list or variable. Let's try to run this. So list is going to store the length in a variable named students1 underscore length. So if we print this out, it is going to say students1 has however many elements. Let's try to run this and see what we have. Let's do this run. And we see that students1 has three elements. How cool is this? Let's do the same for students3 because I want you to see that it is actually one thing because it is in quotes as we see here. So we can ask CMake to print the length of students three. So let's uh, print the length of students and let's see what Copilot is going to give us here. It's going to do what we want and it is going to say the same thing here. So students three is going to have however many elements. Let's try to do that. So student three has one element. Why? Because it is in quotes as we see here. But if we try to print the length of students two, let's try to do that. We can do that. So let's ask Copilot of, okay, it is going to grab the length and store it in a variable and it is going to print it out. And if we run, so let's clear and uh, run our script. It is going to say that students two has four elements. Now I hope you can use the list command to get the length of a list and print it out. One thing you should keep in mind is that the list command here is grabbing the length of this variable and storing the length in another variable that you get to define here. That's why we are dereferencing again and getting this value printed out in our message command. I really hope this is clear. You can also use the list command to append to an existing list so for example, we can append a new student to student two. We had seen that student two had four elements. Now it is going to have five elements if we do that. So let's try to print again. And if we clear and run, it is now going to have five elements as you see here. We can get the length of students three and students two and print it out. So let's uncomment the line here to get the length of student three and print that again. I think we are not going to see anything different. So student three has one element. Okay, students two, why did we do two here? Okay, if you go down, you can see that we can get an element at a given index in a list. And we do that by passing the get option here to the list command. So I think this is going to get the third element in the students two, and that's what we're going to be printing here as our leader. Let's try to see what we get if we run this. So the leader is Victor, uh, because Victor is at index two in the second list here, and these indexes start from zero, so curly is zero, Bo is one, Victor is number two. That's why it is what we see if we run the script here. I really hope this is clear and not confusing. Another thing I want you to see is that we can use the option command to define bool variables. This is used all over the place in CMake and I really thought I could talk about it because we are talking about variables here. So you use the option command to define a variable. The variable name is going to show up as the first parameter. 
you have the option to specify a description for your variable and uh, this description is usable in GUI tools that one may use to configure your CMake projects. Again, we will have a chance to talk about these GUI tools later on. If you don't specify a value, it's going to be off by default, but you also have the option to specify its initial value here. And uh, here we are using the message command to print the value in our optimized variable here. And if you go down, we are using a NIF command here to make a decision. If the value inside this optimized variable is true, we will execute this message here. And if it's false, we won't execute this message. Notice that you have to use this and if thing here. This is the syntax that is required by CMake. And if you run this, this is going to make a decision based on what we have stored in our optimized variable here. Let's try to run this so we can go down and clear and run the script again. And it is going to say, are we optimizing? It is going to be off. And because it is off by default, the message command here is not going to execute. But we can make it on by default. So let's say on. And if we run again, the value is going to be on and we are optimizing. You can see our message here. This is one way you can define bool variables. This is really all I had to share in this lecture, showing you how you can set up lists in your CMake scripts. Once you have a list defined, you can print the values inside, you can get the length, you can get values in your list, you can really do all kinds of crazy things. I hope you found this video useful. I am going to stop here and I will see you next time.